Buenas noches a todos, and thank you for coming tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of the Latino community here in San Francisco. Welcome to the 2012 Latino Heritage Month celebration and award ceremony at City Hall. Uh, my name is Joaquin Torres, and I'm Mayor Edwin M. Lee's Director of Neighborhood Services. And I'm Larissa Dugan Cuadra. I'm the newly appointed Executive Director of the Central American Resource Center, also known as CARESEN. Before we continue, let's have another round of applause for Dr. Loco and for Diana Gameros. And tonight, once the celebration and ceremony is over, we hope you enjoy some refreshments and drinks with us uh, later on this evening here in the South Lake Court. You know, we have so much to celebrate tonight. And so many incredible honorees to recognize this evening. Our honorees and all of you here tonight are true partners in making San Francisco the best city in America in 2012. So. Our theme for tonight's celebration is community unity because it is due to the collective efforts of all of our honorees tonight across diverse fields that binds our city and our communities together. Whether we talk about your successes in innovative education programs, in the classroom, or in the central office, or whether we're highlighting your achievements in community service or in the media by bringing, the home, bringing home the stories that matter most to our community. Or whether we honor your success in promoting the health of all San Franciscans, or the contributions you make to our small business community, or your work investing in our communities and our youth, or bringing the diversity of our communities and our cultures to us through intricate sound, or whether you continue to inspire us through your lifetime of work in the community, bringing safety and respect to the most vulnerable among us. We salute all our honorees tonight, who bring a sense of great pride and dignity to the San Francisco Latino community. So in honor of them, please, let's give them all a round of applause for what they bring to our city, San Francisco. So we know that every great city needs an equally great leader. And our first presenter tonight is exactly that. He recognizes the importance of the strength that diversity brings to a city and the people who live in it. He's a former advocate of affordable housing and the rights of immigrants and renters during his time at the San Francisco Asian Law Caucus. After 20 years in city government as an investigator for the whistleblower program, executive director of the Human Rights Commission, the Director of City Purchasing, the Department of Public Works, and finally as City Administrator prior to his appointment and then election as our city's first Chinese-American mayor, as well as the first Asian-American elected to the office. Please join us in welcoming our mayor, Edwin M. Lee. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches. Well, it's my pleasure to be here with you tonight and to participate in the recognition and honor of our great leaders from our Latino community. And I'll tell you, you know, there is so much contribution that our Latino community is providing the city in every way possible. The arts, law enforcement, restorative justice, uh, just all of the different services in the city. So I'm excited to be here tonight, and it's also my personal pleasure to be joined here to have our Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi, also join here in this community celebration. <clears throat> well, we all know Latino Heritage Month is of very particular importance to us in our city. It's a time when we can celebrate the independence and the self-determination of numerous Central American and South American nations where so many of our residents came from and where our immigrant populations came from. 
You know, there's two important characteristics of our California Latino community that we all know, but it's worth repeating. It is one of the fastest growing populations in our state. That's the number one fact. And it is a very young population. Good for young age. Well, you know, the Latino heart and soul of our city is represented through those of you here tonight in attendance and through our 2012 distinguished honorees that represent the diverse Latino populations in San Francisco. From your accomplishments in business, big and small, to the joy and entertainment that you provide us through your artistic accomplishments, and from your pursuit of social and restorative justice through our community service, your essential coverage in the media, your commitment to education and to health that ensures each and every one of us reaches the true heights of our potential. And lastly, to our innovators who are constantly searching for the new ways to make our lives efficient and ensuring everybody has access to information, we are humbled by all of your service. And all of us share a common vision that's really focused on our families and youth in our city. You know, just this past summer, I had the privilege of working with Leader Pelosi to take up President Obama's call to create as many summer jobs as we could possibly create for our youth. Well, Leader Pelosi, we thank you for standing with us to ensure that we captured the commitment of our corporate partners to invest in our youth. Earlier this summer, I was happy to sit down with the U.S. Secretary of Labor, Hilda Solis, and announced that we surpassed our goal over 5,000 jobs for our kids in San Francisco. That was the result of city agencies working with corporate and private partners, and together we got that done. And we all know the quality of work experience for a young person can be a real bridge to a lifeline. So thank you all for your work. And I also am proud of the work that we do in our communities with our community partners. Partners such as our Mission Economic Development Agency, the school district, the many city agencies that accomplished the promised neighborhood planning grant that we won from the Department of Education. And we will need Leader Pelosi's help to ensure that we get awarded the funds to implement that plan too. Yes. And we hope to hear good news on your next trip to Washington, D.C., along with other good news, Speaker Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> well, we make a promise to build a better future for our Latino youth and their families through the Mission Promise Neighborhoods. And another way in which we can make sure that we build a better future for our youth and families is to make sure our government has the representation that our communities deserve. I have had the pleasure of appointing many Latino leaders to our key government, and I am proud to have, elect, to have elected and appointed the best choice that I know of for District 5, and that's Christina Loggi, the supervisor for District 5. And then you saw recently when City College was running the problems and they had their accreditation challenge, I looked again to the Latino community and I picked Rodrigo Santos to make sure he can help us restore the accreditation and the financial wherewithal for a City College. I know quality education is important. And two of our youth commissioners that I had a chance to appoint Paul Monge Rodriguez and Ramon Gomez, thank you very much for being here and working hard with our Youth Commission. And then later this summer, I had a chance to appoint the city's first Latino Poet Laureate for San Francisco, Alejandro Murguia. Thank you, Alejandro. Alejandro, your words continue to inspire us. And I know the service and representation is important to all of our commissions, from the Latino community where we're serving on the Entertainment Commission, the Public Utilities Commission, the Arts Commission, the MTA Commission. And in our Office of Workforce and Economic Development, you know that 
I launched a new program this year as your new mayor. I wanted to make sure every neighborhood got a chance to share in our growing economy. So we established the Invest in Neighborhoods program. And again, who do I look for to lead my programs in all of the communities? Well, tonight, I want you to know that Joaquin Torres will be heading up the Invest in Neighborhoods program for the whole city. Another great talent. And you know, Joaquin has served as the Director of the Office of Neighborhood Services for quite some time, and he's really gained a significant understanding of all of our neighborhoods. That's why I picked him. And that's where the money is going, by the way. <laughs> and of course, as he's leaving the neighborhood services, who do I pick? Who do I go for? Well, Christina Pallone will be the next Director of Neighborhood Services. Christina, thank you very much for stepping up. As you all know, too, I've been uh, struggling for this summer uh, for the gun violence in our city, looking again for answers. It cannot be just our police department. We have to do more. And as you recall, I, I wrestled with this whole concept of stop and frisk. And many members of the Latino community came up and talked to me personally, officially, and you convinced me that's not the right way to go. All right? All right? <laughs> but there is a right way to go, and we created a program to interrupt the patterns of violence out there, to help the police with predictive policing and using statistics, and the most important part is organizing our communities. And with that, I looked again to our Latino leadership, and I have picked Diana Oliva Orochi to be the director of our community organizing effort in the IPO. Thank you, Diana, for stepping up. That's just an example of the depth of talent we have in our Latino community. You're already serving as the DA, you're serving as so many other parts, our 311 director, our librarian, our treasurer, there are so many other, our city attorney. So there's critical, significant positions that our city uh, is already represented through the Latino community. And I just want to add more of that talent as we celebrate 2012 Latino Heritage Month. And with that, I'd like to invite and introduce someone who has been hard at work for all of us, who understands Latino community, Asian community, African American community, the San Francisco community, and our values. Someone who has fought for over 25 years for all of us. Please welcome the next speaker of the house, leader Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your kind introduction, your nice words of recognition of how we have worked together and for calling us all together for real cause for celebration, Latino Heritage Month. Uh, we're very proud of your leadership in recognizing the excellence in the community uh, to take leading roles in the administration of this, under your leadership, the best city in America. Where did you go? The best city in America. Uh, uh, this, uh, our district attorney, to you, Consul General, to you, to all of the leadership in the room, Larissa and Joaquin, thank you for your leadership in making this event such a special one. It takes place in the context of a year when President Barack Obama recognized the leadership of the community by giving the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest award that can be given by our country uh, to Dolores Huerta for her leadership. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just last week that many of us gathered in the mission to have an at-home celebration of that recognition of Dolores Huerta 
And at that time, many of us exchanged uh, compliments as to uh, who could say the best things about the community. But the best thing I can say about the community is that your commitment to family values, to education, to the work ethic, to a sense of community, to faith, and to family, uh, for all of that, for the courage of many of your ancestors or your immediate families to come to America to make the future better for your families. With that optimism, with that hope, with that determination, you make America more American. So I thank you, Latino community, for your patriotism. I was very proud that in the House of Representatives, we passed the DREAM Act to recognize. <laughs> As you know, it was blocked in the Senate, but I'm so proud that our president, by executive action, was able to stay deportation so the DREAMers could be with us and come forward and, and uh, reach their aspirations in our country, again, making America more American. And I'm so proud that today, that yesterday, that the president went to Keene, California uh, to dedicate the Cesar Chavez National Monument. <laughs> Many of us had worked with our colleagues in the Congress to support the foundation that built the monument, but he, by executive order, declared it a national monument. And I'm so glad that Chuck Ayala, his son Joe, Sam Ruiz, I think Rosario Anayo, some members of the community here uh, were in attendance there. Such a big turnout, they had to turn people away. It was such a, such a draw and a source of great pride. Aren't we proud of that? And aren't we proud of our president? Some of these things, that, the passage of the DREAM Act, the uh, support for the monument for Cesar Chavez, and so many other things that were mentioned by our great mayor uh, were only possible because of the leadership in our Congress of our Hispanic caucus. And I have, I'm pleased to say that, not to be political, but I'm pleased to say that in this election year, we have an opportunity, and I think we will, send 10 more members to Congress to be part of the Latino Congress. And that's an increase. That's an increase of about 50% of the caucus. And four of them will be from California. So we're very, very proud that California leads the way. As the mayor talked about the contribution, uh, it's, it's easy to understand that our beauty, I always say the beauty is in the mix. The strength of our city, our state, and of our country is in our diversity. And the recognition of that and the leadership and, the, and by appointment, by election, uh, by executive order, by whatever it takes uh, to uh, fully engage the talent, the aspirations, and the determination of this community is a great thing for America. And uh, we're all very, very proud of that. And I'm particularly proud today uh, because I have been asked to give a special award. I like congratulate all of the honorees and thank you for what you do for our community and our country. I have the honor uh, to join the mayor in honoring Chuck Ayala with the Dolores Huerta Lifetime Achievement Award. As, um, as Chuck makes his way up here, I want to say for me, this is not only an official honor, Mr. Mayor, but a personal pleasure because Chuck and his wife, Bernice, uh, were two of my earliest supporters uh, 25 years ago when I first ran for Congress. They had one of the first parties for me, uh, house parties, neighborhood pa parties. We've been working together ever since. So my daughter, Christine, and her daughter, Bella, we continue this multi-generational relationship. Uh, Chuck's work as founder of the Centro Latino de San Francisco has done nothing less than give people a sense of worth and dignity. It has grown from providing meals for seniors to being a full-service community center for 2,300 low-income multi-ethnic seniors and families. 
when the White House was holding the conference on aging, I urged them to listen to people who were grassroots activists in the community. And one of the people I asked them to listen to was my appointee to the conference, Chuck Ayala, where he was an advocate for seniors nationwide. In the tradition, okay. <laughs> In the tradition of the great Dolores Huerta, who is a living legend, a great icon in our country, uh, Chuck makes his voice heard from City Hall, Mr. Mayor, you know that, to the White House, for the neighborhoods, to the whole country. And when President, well, when a former president was threatening to privatize Social Security, uh, Chuck Ayala organized the community, made his voice heard, and helped prevent turning Social Security uh, into a privatized gamble for our seniors. We all owe him a great debt of gratitude for saving that pillar, that pillar of economic security. And he's doing that now with Medicare, with Medicare. I mentioned that Doris Huerta received that Presidential Medal of Freedom. That day that she received it, President Obama recounted one of her mantras. Dolores is always saying, don't wait to be invited, step in there. Does that sound like her? Throughout his life, wherever he has seen a challenge or a need, Chuck Ayala has stepped in there. He has not waited to be invited. So it is appropriate that we honor him with the Dolores Huerta Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, we do, in doing so, I'm pleased to be joining our great mayor. And aren't we proud of our mayor? Isn't it wonderful to have him as mayor of San Francisco? When you listen to his resume, you wonder how, for such a young man, he could have fit in all of those accomplishments. But it works well for our city, so we're very proud. So the mayor and I joined together in thanking Chuck Ayala for de decades, decades of community and national leadership, congratulating him on today's, and him and all of today's awardees for their excellence in media and health and medicine and the arts, business, education, community, and innovation. And as the mayor said earlier, expanding security and every other um, aspect of a, of a safe and vibrant community. Uh, and those who are being honored for the arts, thank you for what you do, for all of you, thank you for what you do. It is our special privilege, though, to thank and award Chuck Ayala. Is this it? Is this it? Oh, it's that. Leader Pelosi and Chuck Ayala. You know, Chuck, I've known you for quite some years, and you know, you've taken up the helm of leadership for so many years, but you did something that Leader Pelosi has talked about, the president has talked about, and you listen to the Democratic Convention, we talked about it across the country. When we obtain these positions, the most important thing that we can do is keep that door open for new leadership. And so in, in, in the symbolic gesture that I would like to represent, I would like to have all four of our Latino uh, representatives from the Youth Commission, Ramon Gomez, Paul Manger Rodriguez, Angel Carrion, and Alejandro Guzman Ramos, please step forward and join Chuck Ayala so that we can present Latino Heritage Celebration Day in San Francisco. Old and new, the doors are open for everybody to lead and participate.
And if at this time I could have all our honorees join us on stage for a picture with Leader Pelosi and Mayor Lee. Please come up. Richard Caranza, Jenny Flores, Jaime Maldonado, Luis Aroch. All of honorees, please come to the stage. Our leaders from Spark America. By the way, for those of you who want to continue celebrating Latino Heritage Month in a very celebratory way, the Giants just won. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Thank you to all our honorees. If you will please take a seat and we'll begin with the formal rest of the program. Thank you, Mayor Lee. Thank you, Leader Pelosi. For joining us here today. And go Giants. Gigantes. Woo. Don't you love how Latinos, when we're all together, we don't just clap. We're like, woo. woo. That's just the Latino warmth. And está caliente aquí, ¿verdad? So we're going to try to get through uh, the program quickly. So uh, now we're going to move on to the next stage of our uh, presentation tonight. And we're going to be presenting our first award. We'd like to invite uh, the newly appointed trustee of City College in San Francisco, Rodrigo Santos, to the stage. Our Latino Heritage Education Award this year goes to the new superintendent of the San Francisco Unified School District, Richard Carranza. <laughs> Richard Carranza was sworn in as the new superintendent of San Francisco Unified D District on June 27th of this year. Richard has held the position of Deputy Superintendent of Instruction, Innovation, and Social Justice at the district since 2009. As Deputy Superintendent, Richard led the implementation of the district's equity-focused strategic plan. His responsibilities include the redesign of the district central office to better support school sites and the implementation of core instructional curriculum to achieve more equitable education outcomes for our children. Richard, having entered the public school system speaking no English, he knows, he's experienced firsthand, how transformational education can be and how powerful it is in advancing our communities. Please, let's give a round of applause to our educational work. Thank you, Trustee Santos. Uh, and Senor Caranza, our superintendent, if you won't mind, is staying for a moment uh, so you can have us uh, present our next award to our next honoree. 
And it's a new category for our ceremony tonight. And it goes to a very special, innovative young program based at Mission High School. This inaugural Latino Heritage Innovation Award goes to Spark America, a program in Mission High School and Latino Startup Alliance. So I would like to invite Jesse Martinez, his brother Eduardo Martinez, and co-founder Stephen Martin Clark to come up and accept their award from our superintendent, Richard Caranza. Spark America is a dynamic and blended pilot program introducing tech entrepreneurship to students in Mission High School in San Francisco. The pilot launched in August of 2012 as a course elective teaching students three days a week. One of the most important things they do is to ensure that underrepresented students in our public schools learn about the world of startups, the new economy, as well as providing a hands-on opportunity to engage with the latest web and mobile technologies. The most important thing they believe that they do is bringing in entrepreneurs as guest speakers that reflect the faces of our diverse population to share the work that they are doing in our communities today and their career path and how technology has influenced their lives. So to Spark America, to Jesse Martinez, Eduardo Martinez, and Stephen Martin Clark, we thank you for your service. Next awardees will be recognized for their immeasurable contributions in the field of business. To make this presentation, we'd like to invite to the stage the Honorable Consul General de Mexico, Carlos Felix Corona. <laughs> Jenny Flores is the Community Development Director of City Northern California. I'm sorry, Jenny, would you join us at the stage? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny is a Community Development Director of City Northern California. She is responsible for the community development um, investment in the community, sorry, Community Reinvestment Act program and for ensuring that low-income and underserved communities within her marketplace have access to city's financial services and products. Prior to her position with city, Jenny served as the executive director of the Congress of California Seniors, a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting low-income families on the issues of health care, affordable housing, transportation, technology, and consumer protection. Please give a round of applause to Jenny. Congratulations. Our next honoree in the field of business is Jaime Maldonado of La Victoria Mexican Bakery on 24th Street in the Mission District. <laughs> Jaime Maldonado was born in San Francisco in the late 60s when living in the mission meant you had you define yourself by Chicano, Latino, Mexican-American, or just simply Mexican, even if you were born in the United States. His father founded La Victoria Bakery in 1951, where he took over, Jaime did, in 1992 after graduating from San Francisco State. When we asked him what circumstances most shaped him other than his father, he clearly stated, growing up in the mission, shaped my ideas for community and family. Everyone knew where we came from and knew that our fathers and grandfathers had at one time washed a dish, cleaned a window, picked some fruit. We knew that hard work created community. And if you lost sight of your neighbor and their struggle, you lost sight of your own identity. Unfortunately, he says, for our community, making ends meet requires that you focus on your own struggle. And there is true disconnect when it comes to creating community for community's sake. He hopes that our future leaders can stand and change this, and he wanted all of you to know that those leaders are you. So to you, Jaime, for your work in the community on 24th Street in La Misión de San Francisco, we thank you for your service. And thank you, for, thank you for those sparkly cookies, the sprinkle cookies, because my son, like every time he walks by La Victoria, He's like, Mommy, can we stop? <laughs> so um, thank you for your contributions to our neighborhood. And thank you, Consul General. Our next honoree will be recognized for their contributions in the field of community service. 
To make this presentation, we'd like to invite to the stage our 2010 Community Service Honoree, Estela Garcia, Executive Director of Instituto Familiar de la Raza. The honoree for this year's Community Service Award goes to Luis Aroche, Alternative Sentencing Planner for the District Attorney's Office. Congratulations. Born in San Francisco, California, Luis's mother was a war refugee from El Salvador and his father a former U.S. merchant marine from Puerto Rico, who settled their family of five in a one-bedroom apartment in the Mission District. As a first-generation Latino exposed to street violence, Luis would struggle every day to stay alive. This resulted in him dropping out of high school for safety reasons and led him to spending most of his adolescence in and out of ju juvenile custody. Luis has over a decade of experience in the fields of criminal justice and violence prevention. In February of this year, he was hired by the district attorney, George Gascon, um, to lead the first alternative sentencing initiative as a planner. Luis will help pioneer a new path in prosecution that focuses on reducing recidivism by identifying the needs of the defendant and helping advance public safety. His priorities are to help reduce violent crime, work with the city's most vulnerable communities, and engage in intervention efforts to keep young adults from re-entering the criminal justice system. Luis is a loving husband, a hardworking father, and a proud native of San Francisco's Mission. Felicidades. Our next awardee will be recognized for their contributions in the field of media. And to make this presentation, we ask that our 2008 Latino Heritage Education Award winner from Univision, Carolina Echeverria, join us on stage tonight. Tonight in the field of media, we recognize Fabiola kramsky gascon host and producer of Al Despertar on Univision, as our 2012 Latino Heritage Media Award honoree. <laughs> Fabiola kramsky gascon is an Emmy Award-winning journalist with over 20 years of experience in television, radio, and online news, both in Mexico and the United States. She joined San Francisco's Univision team in 2010, when she moved here with her husband, District Attorney George Gascon. She says that as a San Franciscan, it's with great pride and honor that she accepts this award. She feels very fortunate to be a Latina here in the United States. And she cannot think of a better place to call home than San Francisco. She says that journalism affords her the opportunity to give the community a voice, an opportunity to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, to inform, to build, and to empower those like her who came in search of the American dream. So to you, Fabiola, congratulations and thank you for your service. Our next honoree will be recognized for their immeasurable contribution in the field of health and medicine. We'd like to invite our director of the San Francisco Department of Public Health and our 2010 Health and Medicine Award honoree, Barbara Garcia, to join us on stage to honor our next awardee. Our 2012 honoree for Latino Heritage Health and Medicine Award goes to Dr. Tomas Aragón. So I'll just say that when we looked at all of Tomas's credentials, we would probably spend half of tonight here going through them. Um, so Dr. Tomas Aragón is the health officer of the city and county of San Francisco and Director of Public Health Services at the Department of Public Health. As health officer, he is appointed physician health of official who exercises leadership and legal authority to protect and promote the health of all San Franciscans. 
He is a local equivalent of the U.S. Surgeon General and the CDC Director combined into one role. Tomas is honored and humbled to be a health officer in the city of his birth. We're very happy that we have a local San Franciscan at the head of our health, of our health work. So congratulations and muchas gracias. Well, Mayor Lee, since you're, uh, since you're still here, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for the honor of serving you and giving me the opportunity as a Latino member of our San Francisco community to take on your responsibilities and your challenges. It's a great honor for me to be in the presence of someone who knows how to keep it a family affair, our leader Pelosi here with her daughter Christine and their granddaughter uh, Bella. So it's a great honor for me uh, to accept uh, uh, this position. But our work is really about the community. And before our final award presentation tonight, uh, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, the two newest members of your administration, Mayor Lee, uh, Christina Pallone, who will be the new director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Christina, if you could please, Christina, could you please join me up on stage? Please, please join me in a, round, a, a very warm round of applause for Christina and her work uh, here in San Francisco. First, thank you, Mayor Lee, for this extraordinary opportunity. I am honored to have been considered for this position and look forward to working with you and the entire city family to ensure that San Francisco neighborhoods and communities receive the time and attention they need to continue to thrive, grow, and evolve. Our neighborhoods define our city and are central to making San Francisco one of the best places to live. Thank you to Joaquin for having the foresight and confidence that I have what it takes to take on this new role. I have big shoes to fill, as Joaquin, you did a tremendous job as Mons Director, as did my other predecessors, Alex Turk, former Supervisor Bevan Dufty, Joe Caruso, and Daniel Holmesy, my former Mons Director. I plan to continue the legacy of being a compassionate and accessible leader for this office. In honor of Latino Heritage Month, I must acknowledge my mother, Rosalinda Guerrero Maximo Pallone. She was a strong, outgoing, charming, outspoken, outspoken, feisty, and proud Afro-Latina. She came to this country to escape the harsh realities of extreme poverty, war, and limited opportunity. I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for the strong qualities and principles my mother and my father instilled in my siblings and me. Because of my mother's passion for family, for her community, for the, the Garifuna people of Honduras, I grew up learning the importance of caring deeply about people, their quality of life, and taking the time to understand and educate myself on ways to make meaningful impact in this world. I am very blessed and grateful to have amazing family and network of incredible friends that support and encourage the work I've done for the last eight years for the city and county of San Francisco. The, per the, ne the next person I must recognize is Rhonda Simmons, who is the Workforce Director of the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. She has taught me a lot in the last six years, and I'm tremendously grateful for her leadership, especially when it comes to encouraging women, up-and-coming women, in politics. I also want to thank Supervisor Malia Cohen and City Administrator Naomi Kelly for their insight and wisdom that they have shared with me along the way. In closing, I look forward to this incredible opportunity to continue the work I've been doing for years in the neighborhoods and within the communities, to partner with each and every person that is committed to making San Francisco a stellar place to live, work, and visit. Together, we can make a difference, one issue at a time. Thank you. Centro America in the house. <laughs> and that's not all. We also have a very special person who I've had the privilege of working with on a daily basis. And the one lament that I have of uh, leaving your administration, Mr. Mayor, is that I won't be able to work with Diana on a daily basis inside Room 200. Uh, I would like to invite up Diana Olivia Roch, Mayor Lee's new Director of Violence Prevention Services, to make her introduction to you.
Good evening, Raza. How are we? My name is Diana Oliva Roche, and I am proud to say that I'm a San Francisco native, and I've been newly appointed under Mayor Lee as his Director of Violence Prevention Services. Um, I'd like to thank Mayor Lee for the opportunity, and I'd also like to thank my loving husband for uh, standing by my side, my family, and I'd also like to thank every individual that has mentored me in this audience. I come from roots that are very much rooted in this city and that are really strong in mentorship and really about understanding how it is important to be proud of who you are, but it's also important to create solidarity amongst different people of color throughout our communities. And so, I come with that spirit to you, to the administration of Mayor Lee, to be able to work very hard, like those farm workers that taught us to work very hard day and night. Like my mother, who was a housemaid in the Presidio and taught me to work very, very hard every single day. Like my father, who's a shoe repairman in North Point in Embarcadero, who taught me to work very, very, very hard. And all those Central Americans who've taught me what it is to struggle and what it is to be able to balance peace in our communities. And so with that, I just wanna say it is an honor to be a part of this administration. And my vision is to be able to hold safety, public safety in a balanced way by at the same time looking at long-term goals that really sustain violence prevention services like a community, as a community, as a united community of San Francisco. And so today, I just want to honor, you know, el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. The pueblo united, the village united, will never be defeated. And I truly, truly believe in that spirit. And I honor those ancestors yesterday and today and throughout October, those indigenous people that have taught us that concept. And I hope that I can bring that spirit to you and work really hard to make our community safer. Thank you. I just have to say, I've known Diana for most of my working life, and she's a fierce advocate. And so she will continue to be a fierce advocate beyond City Hall. She's been there before, she's here now, and we know she's gonna be here later. So congratulations, Diana. And Caresen's very proud of you. So thank you, Diana, and thank you, Christina. We look forward to your service. On behalf of all the residents in the city and county of San Francisco, I, I was very proud to be a part of um, uh, our next presenter tonight um, in, in helping uh, to, to make sure that we had additional Latino representation in the arts. Um, and so I'd like to ask uh, to present our final award this evening, the first Latino Poet Laureate in the city and county of San Francisco, Alejandro Murguia, to join us on stage. And Larissa, I'm going to invite myself to say a few words. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> it's a great honor to be here celebrating our community and our culture and to present this award to someone whom I have known since he was a young brown buffalo just starting out. And I'm also very, very pleased to see so many elected officials here like Mayor Edwin Lee, Representative Nancy Pelosi, District Attorney Gascon, Police Chief Sir. I'm very pleased about that, but I also want to remind them that the next time we meet at one of these receptions, I'm going to ask for their reading list. <laughs> and I hope to see many, many Latino authors, many, many Latina poets, especially those authors and books that have been banned recently in Arizona. <clears throat> so while we celebrate today, keep in mind that in other places like Arizona, perhaps we don't have as much to celebrate. Venceremos. Gracias.
Our 2012 Latino Heritage Arts Award recipient for tonight is John Santos. John, please join us on stage tonight. You know, you all should be starstruck because this is a four-time Grammy nominee here. Five-time Grammy nominee here. A U.S. artist, Fontanaus Fellow. John Santos is one of the foremost exponents of Afro-Latin music in the world today. He is known for his innovative use of traditional forms and instruments in combinations with contemporary music and has earned much respect and recognition as an educator, a composer, and record and event producer. He has performed, recorded, and studied with acknowledged masters of the Afro-Latin and jazz idioms such as Cachao, Dizzy Gillespie, Tito Puente, Bebo Valdez, Lázaro Ross, Armando Peraza, Eddie Palmieri, Patato Valdez, Francisco Aguabella, and many, many others. He was born in San Francisco, California. He was raised in Puerto Rico and Cape Verdean traditions of his family, always surrounded by music. The fertile musical environment of the San Francisco Bay Area shaped his career in a new, new very unique way. And his studies of Afro-Latin music have included several trips to New York, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Brazil, and Colombia. And I know that Stacy, the new executive director of Brava uh, Theater for Women, Women in the Arts, will let you know when he's playing again upcoming for Dia de los Muertos uh, in the days ahead. So, Senor Santos, thank you so much for your contributions to the arts community here in San Francisco, and we thank you for your service. Thank you very much, Joaquin. I want to say thank you to the, to the mayor also and to, to the nominating committee. I want to also acknowledge my, my family, my inspiration, my, uh, my father who passed away last week, was also a San Francisco native, my mom who's in the hospital right now in the aftermath of a knee replacement, who is also a San Francisco native, that this means a lot for us. Uh, those of us, I know I speak for 99% of the Latino and jazz musicians who are not playing commercial music, whose photos are not on the covers of magazines or in the newspaper, we're not on television, and we, we play this music because it's our roots, it's who we are, it's a tradition handed down to us, and this kind of an award means a lot. I think it means more to us than to, to anybody else. Also when we talk about Latin, Latino Heritage Month, for us, every month, of course, is Latino Heritage Month. But I want to point out that we are, first and foremost, human beings, no better or worse than any other human being on this planet. And I hope everybody in this room will continue, if you're so inclined, to continue to work for human rights around the globe, despite, no, it doesn't matter where people are from, what flag that we're flying. Okay, muchas gracias. Well, tonight we have uh, some very, very special sponsors tonight. Torpe Sueño, Wells Fargo, AT&T, Comcast, PG&E, and all of the Latino winemakers who are very, very ready to begin serving all of you while you listen to incredible music from our performers tonight. So I want to recognize uh, tonight Renteria Wines, Bodega de Sur Winery, Alex Otello Cellars, Encanto Vineyards, San Jalisco, Restaurant, Florida Street Cafe, and Mission Language and Vocational School, and of course, Brava for Women in the Arts. So thank you all for making the time to be with us tonight and celebrate Latino community. Mm -hmm. 